Hi, I'm Jeff Dollower, and I'm uh, going to be taking a few moments to present out the results of our um, improvement session where we were looking at how do we improve access to surgical services at Menyawin Health Centre for people who are living in the northern communities. So when we're looking at trying to improve the quality of service, one of the first things we do is look at what does value mean. So in this case, we've come up with a value statement that says, please help me fully understand my health and health challenges so I can make informed choices about surgery. I'd like timely care when it's necessary in the most suitable location. I want to be clear about what will happen next so I can prepare properly, help support my recovery at home. So one of the key problems that we've been presented with are the amount of cancellations that occur in both clinics and on surgical days. Almost half of the days there are four or more cancellations occurring. This represents a tremendous opportunity to improve how people are scheduled and arrive at Menyawin for surgical services. So think about somebody who may need access to surgical services to have their uh, gallbladder removed. It's called laparoscopic cholecystectomy. The first step is to identify and diagnose the need. This would involve coming down, in many cases, um, to Menyawin Health Center to have an ultrasound, if the ultrasound is not available up north, which it often isn't. So that would be a trip from the community to the hospital, after the ultrasound, from the hospital back to the community. The second visit would include a pre-op clinic visit with the surgeon. Two more trips. The third trip is for the actual surgical service. Two more trips. The final follow-up visit is um, after surgery, again two more trips. In total there's eight trips between uh, the northern community and the hospital. So let's look in detail at this process and what, what can we learn. The first step occurs in the nursing stations in the north. Identified need. So here we have nurses and physicians who are often cases um, varying, coming and going from the community and, uh, and need to understand how to make referrals from their location. In the case of, a, of an ultrasound, they'll process an ultrasound by, by creating a requisition and sending it to uh, Menyawin Health Center. There's travel involved in getting an ultrasound because um, ultrasounds may not be able to be done in the north. In fact, they're only uh, rarely available right now. The end of the process here involves transmitting a surgical consult. So the family physician is, has looked at the ultrasound, interpreted it, and is going to fax off a consult note to the surgeon um, requesting that the, that the patient be seen. And at this point as well, we've got the beginning uh, of the faxing of benefit forms to NIHB. Once the referral is received in a surgical clinic, the um, some background information is gathered and a priority is set within the, uh, within the coming two weeks. The surgeon reviews 20 or 30 referrals and assigns a uh, uh, an urgency on them. The clerk then picks a clinic date that's appropriate given the urgency and then the process of sending off the appointment notifications to both the GPs to tell them their patient has been uh, scheduled or being scheduled, as well as to the NIHB, indicating that we need a, a benefits request. Our patient needs to travel from the north to the hospital. At this point, the process of travel begins, where NIHB receives the benefits requests. The benefits requests are received by fax and distributed to one of nine travel clerks who work 8 to 4 Monday to Friday. They're going to triage these benefits requests that are looking for either accommodation or travel, or usually both in this case. And they're going to assign them to one of nine travel clerks who are connected to the 28 northern communities, which are kind of carved up uh, among the nine travel clerks. They're going to register the, the, um, the patient in the Ontario travel medical system and generate appointment warrant uh, that they fax to the nursing station. The nursing station travel clerk gets his appointment warrant and, um, and they also, um, closer to the date of travel, they're going to book transportation. Transportation is booked using the Wasea uh, Amelia Res booking system. It's done online. There's one person there who supports it and it's, um, and it's instant. At this stage, we have both the travel warrant and the accommodation warrant that are faxed to the Northern Nursing Station, which may or may not receive the fax if, if their fax is working and the lines are up. 
the, um, the Northern Nursing Station is going to make a copy of those warrants and give them to someone called the travel clerk. Travel clerk's job is to distribute those appointment warrants and, and inform the patient of travel. And at this stage, we have um, a, a possible failure in the process. It may be that the patient doesn't get informed before the flight. Uh, they may get only very little notice before the flight. And in fact, the information the patient gets about their travel is, is the first time occurring here. So while their knee may have presented four to six weeks earlier, when they saw the, the, the GP or the nurse in the Northern Nursing Station, this is the first time they're going to hear about their travel to, um, to Menyawin and they may not understand the reason why that travel is occurring. Wasea also uh, generates a flight manifest which they send to their, uh, to their clerk in the, uh, in the northern community. Patient goes uh, through the um, airport process, the flight to, to Sioux Lookout. The hostile check-in is um, occurs. The patient um, is now booked into either the hostel or one of the local ho uh, hotels. There's five that may be chosen from. There, at any time, there's 10 to 20 patients who are, who are staying at a local hotel. The next morning, they're going to uh, arrive at the registration desk of Menyawin uh, Health Center, where they'll be uh, registered and given a wristband, where at this point, they can uh, travel uh, and present themselves to the pre-op uh, pre clinic. So now the patient arrives in the clinic after uh, registration. And if they arrive, they're going to be checked in and, and registered. But if they don't show, there's a whole process that the, that the clinic clerk goes through, which in includes calling NIHB and the nursing station, trying to find out why this person hasn't arrived. Uh, this occurs, as we know, uh, on many occasions. A large proportion of events are no-shows. And so we try to find out why that is, and the whole process has to begin again. For the patient, the value is I get a surgical assessment. I'm going to find out if I'm appropriate for surgery. Um, the, the, the surgeon's going to assess me. They're going to um, help me give informed consent. And um, they're going to complete a whole bunch of uh, pre-op workup. Um, the nurse, after the surgical assessment, is going to help me understand a little bit more about what I can do to prepare for surgery. They're going to get a whole series of information handouts. And a key step here is that they're going to be scheduled in person with a surgical um, date. And all surgeries are currently set for 7 a.m. So now I've left the surgical clinic, but for me to get home, I need to be able to get the benefit of a flight home. So there's another benefits request that gets faxed to NIHB. The fax is received by the central clerk who distributes it again to one of the nine um, benefits clerks, the relevant one that's assigned to my community. That person is going to triage this, presumably try that same day to, to book me a flight. In the off hours, the hostel staff book the transportation requests directly with Amelia Rez and through uh, with Wasea. The patient will be um, check in at the hostel, they'll wait in the lobby um, up to uh, several hours that day waiting to hear if um, their benefits request has been approved by NHB. All, all of them are approved. The main key thing here is that the flight is actually arranged. The details are communicated to the, to the patient by means of an overhead um, page. If the patient happens to be in the uh, hostel, they'll hear this. They'll, uh, they'll know that their flight arrangement uh, has been made and they'll know when to take, their, uh, to, uh, take a taxi to the airport. One of the key issues here is that the, the patient may not know they'll be out of the hostel, perhaps picking up some medications. If the uh, flight arrangements are not made, they'll have to stay overnight and may need to uh, take up some more accommodation at the hostel, bumping yet more people to neighboring hotels to stay, to stay there for their accommodation. Finally, the patient will get their flight um, and fly to the northern community, return home, and at this point they're waiting to hear back from NIHB to find out if their travel has been approved now for their um, trip for surgery. So the patient's left day surgery and they got a surgical uh, uh, date. Now we have to go through the whole process again of uh, waiting for NIHB to review the benefits request, process it, book the appointments, book the transportation, communi th communicate the transportation arrangements through the um, travel clerk in the, uh, in the northern community, and then, uh, which may or may not occur, 
properly in time for the um, in time for the surgery. The surgery is typically booked perhaps a month out. This process could take could take that long. So as we head in towards uh, receiving surgery, there's a whole bunch on the day of surgery and the day before. There's a whole bunch of preparatory steps that are occurring: reviewing the charts, um, registering the patient in uh, you know in in reception. Um, having them wait in the lobby um, for their surgical day. Um, the day is planned when the longest surgeries are done first thing in the morning and the others are done later towards the day. So there's a fairly significant wait time throughout the day. Once the anesthetist approves the patient, then uh, or there's going to be a medication administration. And the, the payoff here is the patient's going to get their surgery on this day, which involves you know, the procedures of safety checks and anesthesiology and and uh, the, the procedure itself. Uh, recovery, at the, after the patient has recovered, we're going to, uh, and they've hit a certain s um, score around their, um, their cognition and their alertness, they're going to be discharged and, uh, and pick up, um, and uh, at this point they'll leave with again their NIHB form. At discharge, they, they will, um, the benefit for traveling home will be requested from NIHB. Again, it's faxed to NIHB, it's faxed to the hostel, and the patient also takes that benefits form with them. They, upon leaving, they, they may go and seek out uh, the pharmacy benefits, and then uh, we'll go through the process of, uh, of traveling from hostel to community. That process is back over here again. It uh, involves the NIHB receiving the benefit request, prioritizing it, booking the transportation while the patient again waits in the hostel um, and, and eventually gets informed of their travel time uh, back home. If that all goes well, they'll get home um, the day, uh, day after a day of surgery, later that day. If not, they'll have to wait till the next day. The fourth and final visit is the follow-up visit that the surgeon uh, conducts with the patient, make sure everything went well with the surgery and the recovery was good. So that involves, again, transportation from community back to hostel, the benefits request process of going, again, from hostel back to the community. As you can see, all told, there's hundreds of steps involved in this process, um, taking um, months to finally complete. So we've helped create an understanding of the current state of the process, and with that, an understanding of its capability to deliver patient value. As with any process, there's plenty of opportunity to deliver uh, better value for clients. And that involves leadership and frontline management working together to examine the process, look at the ideas that were presented at the workshop, and see how we might transform the patient's experience to reinvent this process so that value is delivered when patients need it, where they need it.